Hey guys, welcome back, and if you're new here, welcome for the first time. I'm Jim, and I'm making a tutorial video today about Luminar Neo, and specifically, I am talking about the one tool to rule them all. This is the tool that if you understand how to use this tool, your photos will be better. You will get more control over your image, you'll have better results, you'll have more powerful impact on your image, and there's a lot to this tool. It is the best tool, it is the most powerful tool, it is the most complete tool, it is raw develop. We're going to dive into that because it does so much for you. Let's get going. Here's an image. Develop raw is right up here and specifically I'm talking about raw files in this video. You can shoot in any format you like. I highly recommend shooting in raw files. It gives you more data to work with which means you can have more flexibility in post and sort of get away with more heavy-handed edits, things like that if you're interested. If you're not interested, that's totally fine, of course, that's up to you. But we're gonna dive into Develop Raw. I'm gonna edit this photo just using Develop Raw, just one instance, as you probably know, if you're not, you know, if you've already had Neo, you can use Develop and then use it again and again. If you wanna see a video about me using Develop again and again, hit me up down below, leave me a comment and let me know. Let's get into it. The first section is camera profiles. This basically defines how a raw image is rendered and it's like a recipe for getting the raw data into accurate colors. Now it defaults to Luminar default. Honestly, I use Luminar default all the time. It works just fine for me, but there are various other profiles built in. You can also load your own. Note that these only apply on RAW files. If you're using something other than a RAW file, you're not gonna have this option for DCP, which stands for DNG Camera Profile. But if you click on these, you will see that it makes an impact on the photo and uh, various uh, looks and that sort of thing in terms of how the photo is interpreted, or I should say the RAW data is interpreted. I'm gonna leave it at uh, Luminar default. It works fine for me. And I'm gonna jump into light because this is where I um, generally begin my editing unless I feel like there are some distortion kind of related things. And so that's what I'm actually recommend doing first. Actually go down to optics and click auto distortion and you'll see that it fixed that. It basically helped remove some of the uh, distortion that was in the photo. And if you didn't notice, there was a spot on the upper left. And because of how this distortion has been corrected, the spot's actually been removed from the photo without me actually cropping it out. So I actually will actually generally start with optics and if necessary, you also have transform, which would allow you to further shift things. Like if you needed to tilt the photo one way or the other a little bit more, you could do some of that. Comes in really handy with architecture where you need to get a little bit straighter lines. I don't need it in this photo. I think things look great. So I'm gonna go back up here to light. Now the first thing I'm gonna do, and this is generally how I start, is I'll add a little bit of smart contrast and then I'm just taking a look at the photo. Now it's way too dark, but we're gonna uh, fix that by bringing the highlights down because I wanna keep, uh, again, raw file, so I've got more to work with here. I can pull back more from those highlights. The sun is just blown out there. Um, I didn't get a perfectly exposed shot, but I think my end result is uh, still pretty nice. But uh, pull down those highlights to get a little bit better control, but I'm gonna pull up the uh, shadows significantly. So I'm gonna go to 88 here, and I mean, wow, what a different photo, right? Now, it has a bit of a color cast, but hey, this is the most powerful tool in Luminar Neo, so we're gonna fix the colors as well. I think that's looking really good, though. I mean, considering I started like that, and I'm now at that much brighter photo, I've got some nice warmth in the photo, a little bit of a green tint, easy to fix because you have so many tools here. I'm gonna go ahead and close the light section and go on to whites and blacks. I'm actually gonna lift the whites just a little bit. I wanna get some nice, crisp, beautiful whites. And I'm taking the blacks down just a little bit as well. And that's just helping create a little bit of contrast in the photo. Slightly undoes some of the brightening that I did with the shadow work in the light section, but that's okay. Now, what we don't have is a histogram. And when we have a histogram, hopefully in a upcoming update to Luminar Neo, we'll have that. But once we have that, I'm also hoping that we'll have the J key and you'll be able to hit the J key and see which parts are really blown out and which parts are in deep black. And that would be something useful. And I'll come back and talk about that when we have it. Um, but that's useful for whites and blacks as well as for these shadows and highlights up here. I'll get to that in a future video. I'm gonna keep going here, but I mean, again, so far, I mean, great, great result. And I wanna jump into curves. Now, if curves is new to you or scares you, I've got a video right there all about curves and how it works. Amazingly powerful. I've had to, if I had to isolate 
one specific tool within the develop tool for the most power and control, it would be curves. I highly recommend becoming friends with curves, experimenting, you're not gonna break anything, just play around, move sliders. But this video today is not a full tutorial of curves, I did that in that other video. So what I wanna do is I'm actually gonna leave the uh, general tone curve alone. I wanna get in and adjust some of the colors. And so I'm gonna come in here to the mid-tones on the red and I'm gonna bump those up slightly, getting a little bit more red tone there. In the mid-tones, I'm gonna go to the green and I gotta check my notes. I'm gonna go slightly down in the mid-tones and the highlights. So slight mid-tone drop and slight highlight drop. And what I'm doing there is the opposite of green is magenta. So in these uh, mid to highlights, in these mid-tone areas, I'm basically pulling away from the green. Remember, a little bit of a green color cast, and I'm going a little bit more toward the magenta. Now, I might need to come back and massage these to get it just right, but basically I'm just creating a little bit more pleasing color. And in red, by the way, the opposite of red is cyan. So if you look at this, there it is before, and then what I did is in the mid-tones, which is going to apply to a broad part of the image, I just lifted the mid-tones slightly to give it a little bit more red across the image, uh, mostly targeting the mid-tones. And what I'm going to do is something similar here in blue. I'm going to grab the blue, get in the mid-tone area, and just go slightly up. And you can see, I mean, this is, I think, having some very pleasing results on the colors. I think that's just honestly come a really long way from that. And if you consider what it looked like before I touched curves, the colors are way out of whack. Now I think I've got colors that look like the way it looked when I was there. This was Anguilla in the Caribbean, a beautiful sunset, beautiful uh, island. Uh, just wonderful people. Anyway, I think the colors now look a lot more like what it looked like because you can see, I mean, there's a green color cast. Some of that is the way the orangey yellow and the blue are interacting. They don't look that great together here, but you can see there's a fair amount of blue in the image, but also some nice warm tones. I think I've got a lot of that back by playing with curves. So now that I've done that, keep in mind, by the way, I haven't even gotten to color, which is where I'm going next, but you can make a massive impact on the colors in your image by playing with those specific RGB settings in the Curves tool. So again, totally recommend being friends with that. Uh, now I'm gonna come in and play with the temperature and tint. So in this case, I'm actually gonna take the temperature slightly left. I'm gonna go a little bit cooler. You can see what I'm doing there. Whereas, you know, if you prefer a warmer look, of course, just drag the temperature to the right. I'm actually going for a little bit of a cooler look here because I really like the kind of the interplay of that cool and the warm. I'm gonna leave the tint at 10. Sometimes I go a little bit to the right, like maybe a 15 or something here. In fact, I might do a little bit of a 15. It gets me a little bit further away from those greener tones because the tint slider is that green and magenta that are opposite. And then I've got saturation and vibrance. I'm gonna give it a little bit of a bump in saturation here, maybe a 10 or so, and maybe the same or so, maybe a little bit more, maybe a 15 in vibrance. But you can see, we've got a much more balanced image in terms of light distribution. I've got nice contrast. It looks like a really richly contrasted image. And my colors, I think, look beautiful. And I've only been using one tool. I mean, this is all I've done is play and develop raw. And I went from that to that. Keep in mind, I've enhanced colors, I've enhanced light, I've fixed contrast, I've fixed a color cast, I've done all these kind of things, and I haven't even left Develop Raw. So again, most powerful tool, absolutely recommend that you become really good friends with this tool. Just play around with it. Just, hey, if you have five or 10 minutes here, just drop a photo in Luminar, play around, move some things, try the Curves tool, check out my video on Curves, and even if you don't check out my videos, check out somebody's. Uh, there's so many options for you in terms of using this tool that you can just really get a lot done. Now, it also has sharpness, so I tend not to sharpen photos a whole lot, but you do have this sharpening option here if you wanna take advantage of it, and noise reduction you have as well. Again, I tend not to use these noise reduction settings necessarily. In this case, I don't really have a lot of noise, but if I wanted to, you know, you can affect the noise that's uh, present, you know, uh, luminosity noise as well as color noise, um, and that would just smooth out some of that little bit of graininess that might occur if you've shot at a slightly higher ISO. Now, if you have extreme noise in an image, I definitely recommend a specialty product for that. I've talked about some of those in previous videos, but a little bit of smoothing there is nice, and I think that helps the photo overall. And then again, I'm down to optics and transform, which I touched on in the beginning. So in this video, and really in every photo, I start and develop 
And if you notice, in Luminar AI, the previous version of Luminar, the first tool up there was Accent AI, which is down here. It was Enhance AI as the tool, but Accent AI was a specific slider. That was the first tool. And now the first tool here to develop your photos with is Develop Raw. So I think what they're saying is, hey, it really makes sense to do your raw develop first because you're using a richer data set. If you jump into one of these other tools, you're basically skipping over using all the raw data. And I think you're better off starting with a raw file in develop raw and getting, frankly, a lot done to your photo before I even go in and do any kind of typical enhancements or changes that I might wanna make. So if I take a look at where I started, there it is, and there I am. Incredible difference, and honestly, I'm. I'm good with that. I can commit to having that. I mean, there's a couple of spots I need to take out, but otherwise you could call that an edit and I didn't touch any other tools. Now, me being me, I'd probably go in and maybe, you know, add a little bit of golden hour to pop some of those warmer tones and really give it some oomph. Maybe something like that where it's really kicking up those warm tones that already exist. I think that looks pretty nice, but I think other than that, I probably wouldn't do a whole lot to this image. There's before and after, but again, totally optional, not something you have to do. But if you look at the before and after, I mean, we started with wrong color cast, way too dark, poor distribution of light, and just overall just kind of blah, kind of flat, and kind of not that attractive. And with just using raw develop, we got a lot done here, my friends. That's the power of raw develop in Luminar Neo. Highly recommend that you spend some time using this tool, getting accustomed and used to all the different aspects of it, including curves. Like I said, play around, have fun. You're not gonna break anything, but just experiment, experiment, experiment. You will learn this tool. You'll start to kind of intuitively know what you need to do to each image when you look at it and trust that you can get just about all of that done in develop if you want to. That's it for this one, my friends. Hope it helps. Thanks for watching. I'll be back soon with more videos. You guys take care of yourselves. I will see you really soon. And until then, my friends, adios.